Okay, uh, today I just wanted to uh, briefly go through uh, a complete neurological exam and this will be one that uh, there's really no way you can do it in a, a busy family practice office. Usually a patient seeing uh, for some uh, neurological problem is not a young patient, so just getting from the waiting room to the uh, exam room is sometimes an ordeal and then getting up and down from a chair to the table up and down uh, just takes forever. You just can't do it in a busy practice. So what I was going to do is just contrast a complete uh, neurological exam uh, in the worst scenario, up and down, back and forth, with one where you can do it either seated, standing, or on the table and you're not jumping back and forth consuming a lot of time and it's practical for a busy family practice uh, physician to do it. And uh, we got Megan helping us with this today, and uh, let's just suppose she's a 80-year-old lady that comes in for some problem and, and you feel the necessity to do a, a neurological exam, okay? She usually come in the room, she's seated in the chair, you already have a mental status exam done. So we're already 10 minutes into this. Usually some of your office help or office nurse has done that. And what I'm going to do is take advantage of every move she makes to get something tested neurologically. Um, so I would come in, I'd introduce myself, I would ask her her problem, and then we would proceed with the exam. Now. When I have her arise from the chair to go to the table, I want to do strength testing on the lower extremities while I'm spending that time moving around. So what I'm going to ask her to do is fold your arms, please, ma'am, and stand up. Very good. That's equivalent to half of a deep knee bend, so you've got a 5 over 5 quadriceps strength right there. While she's up, I'll say stand on your toes, please. Good. Stand on your heels, please. Good. And let's pat real fast. And let's pat real fast over here. Very good. And can you walk heel touching toe for me? Good. Okay. All right. And uh, put your feet together. Close your eyes. Don't move. Very good. Okay. Let's uh, have a seat on the table. So I basically uh, checked a Romberg. I've checked lower extremity strength. I've already checked for uh, coordination and spasticity in the lower extremities. I've done everything to combine as many things while I'm down, while I'm moving, and now I'll do the part of the exam while we're seated. And we'll start with cranial nerves. And of course, you remember cranial nerve one is smelling. She covers one nostril, and we hold something like orange extract or coffee. We check each nostril individually. As a rule, unless there's some problem with smell or taste, it's not even done. Hence, on your exam, you write cranial nerves 2 through 12. Never write 1 through 12 if you didn't do it. Uh, if ever a legal issue comes up and you didn't document you checked smell, your validity is already go uh, gone, and the lawyer will just point out, well, doctor, if you'll admit that, uh, how much else did you omit or fake in the uh, progress note in the examination. Okay, cranial nerve two, we're gonna go uh, vision, and we do it monocularly, all four quadrants. Okay, look at my eye, we see the same thing. Look at my eye, how many fingers? Good, how many? One. Okay, how many? One. Uh -huh. And how many? Two. Good. And now this eye, all four quadrants again. One. Uh -huh. Two. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. one. Okay, and it's best to use one or two, three and four gets too complicated. Now, uh, checking the uh, extraocular muscles, it's the uh, easiest, fastest way to do it. Follow my finger with your eyes, just make a big G, and then come in. Good. All right, and while we're checking the face, wrinkle your forehead up, and we have nice creases uh, bilaterally. Show me all your teeth. You're looking at the depth of the nasolabial fold and symmetry on both sides. Puff them full of air. Again, looking for any facial weakness there. Uh, stick your tongue out, wiggle, okay. open wide, say ah, good, okay. Close your eyes and point to the noise you hear. 
and she has excellent hearing, okay? All right, what I want you to do is to push my hand away. Turn your head. There you go, okay? Turn your head this way. Very good. Look down. Good. And now bend down and look up. Very good, all right? And then while we're going, we're just going basically head to toe. So let's uh, skip to the shoulders. Hold your arms up like this. I'm gonna go ahead and do motor of the deltoids. Good. Make a muscle. Pull back. Good. Pull back. Good. While I'm here, push away. Triceps. Push away. C7 triceps. Good. Spread your fingers apart. Don't let me push them together. C7. Uh, C8. Good. Thumb to index finger. Don't let me pull them apart. A lot easier to check weak muscles than strong muscles. Thumb to little finger, don't let me pull them apart. And you gotta remember, it'll be a lot different between a 20 year old and an 80 or 90 year old. Okay, uh, let's do this. Tap, tap, tap. And now this side. And remember our dominant hand will be certainly a lot smoother than sometimes a little klutzy on our non-dominant hand. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, one, two, cut. Good. All right. Clap up and over, up and over. And this side. Some physicians will have them do it on their thigh. Up and over, up and over. And now the other side. Up and over, up and over. Whatever you're comfortable with and is easiest for you and the patient. Okay. Uh, the old standby in neurology. Pronator drift. Close your eyes, don't let them move. While you're checking pronator drift, you might as well knock out cerebellar testing while you're there too. I do check and rebound. She checks the downward movement, it comes back without excessive flailing, so that's good. We'll look for pass pointing in the cerebellum, make a pointer, make a pointer. Go ahead and feel the tip of your nose, see where it's at. Most people will miss it the first time, so go ahead and know where it's at. Now touch the tip of your nose. Good, come on back. Touch the tip of your nose, come on back. And uh, this is interesting, most people don't know this, but you feel my finger, okay? I want you to touch your nose and then come back to my finger without looking. Touch your, okay, feel my finger, touch your nose, come back to my finger. Okay, that's, that's very close, skimmed on the side of it, okay? Um, now, uh, while we're here, we'll just go ahead and start knocking out our reflexes. Let your jaw just fall and relax. Jaw jerk, that's checking a reflex at the level of the palms. I'm gonna drop down, get the biceps, C5, 6. While I'm here, I'm gonna get the triceps, let it fall, just relax, just relax, just relax, C7. I'm going to get brachioradialis, again, getting a C5-6. Okay. What I can do is come on down here. I watch the move of her thumb. And you're really dropping to get a C7-8. Another way of testing it would be watch the movement of the thumb when I flip her finger. And of course, if there's any signs of hyperreflexia, the thumb really jerks excessively when I do that, okay? And then you're sort of in, as far as reflexes go, no man's land. Of course, you can do abdominal reflexes, checking the uh, upper and lower uh, thoracic levels. Uh, the anal wink checks S1. Other than that, you're in no man's land until you get down to the knee, L234. So we come down, we check. L234. Okay, if you ever get some asymmetry, put your hands together and pull. 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 Okay, called the Gendrasic maneuver, just distracting. And pull. And pull. If you ever can't get an ankle jerk, do this. Push down against my hand like you want to go one mile an hour in the car. And all you're essentially doing is making them relax because uh, they tend to help you. When you want to lift the foot up, they tend to hold their foot up. When they hold their foot up, you don't get an ankle jerk. Okay, push down one mile an hour. And one mile an hour here. 
Good. And while you're here, go ahead and do plantar responses. Again, lateral aspect of the foot coming forward, crossing over at the base of the toes. And no response is uh, certainly uh, normal. You might write that on the chart as not a downgoing toe, but a silent toe. The main thing is she didn't fan and go up with a, uh, a Babinski. Okay, so we've done that. And the least favorite part of everybody's exam is sensory. And the cotton tip applicator is your primary weapon here, if you can get it to splinter. So again, we'll just drop up and start head to toe. Okay, sharp, sharp, side to side comparison. So you did the three divisions of the fifth cranial nerve. Sharp, all the way around, same side to side. Same side to side. And you may want to go to the hands. You've got to remember, too, if you've got a peripheral lesion, such as an ulnar entrapment or a median entrapment carpal tunnel, it may be different one side to the other. So just because there's a difference doesn't mean that you had a stroke or some type of upper motor neuron lesion. Ideally, the patient be in shorts or in a gown, so you can just go all the way around the thighs, front and back, all the way around and make sure it's the same on either side and same left to right. And again, down here, you can do the same at the calf. Go all the way around and compare that side to this side. And on the foot, all the way across. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean something uh, serious. Neurological could be an old uh, disc lesion that they're no longer aware of. But as you come across, you go into your upper lumbar segments and, and rule that out. All right, uh, check in. Uh, you can double check pinprick pain with cold. So cold should be the same on both sides. If there's diminished pinprick on one side, there should also be diminished cold. And diminished cold is the tuning fork feels warmer, not colder. So this is the same on both sides. While we're here, feel it buzzing, checking the posterior columns. Tell me when it stops. And tell me when it stops. Okay. And again, remember too, uh, if there's diminished vibration, this person usually has uh, problems with proprioception and balance. Uh, it could be as simple as a peripheral neuropathy with diabetes, hypertension, long-term smoking. Or uh, keep in mind uh, the two primary diseases of the posterior columns, B12 deficiency and syphilis. Okay, and you feel this buzzing. And tell me when it stops. and feel this buzzing and you don't have all day so speed up stopping by just gently touching it with your hand. Stop. Okay. While I'm here, cold. Is it the same all the way? Yep. Cold. Good. Okay. 